Statistics and Excel, Bell Curve, Test Score Example Part Number One. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. You know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, blank worksheet, so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. Working with the bell curve or normal distribution, starting out with an example familiar to both students and instructors. That, of course, being grades. We'll actually use a random generator tool to create our data. Great tool to be familiar with as you practice with a bell curve, for example. Doing some calculations will create a histogram, seeing if the characteristics of our data might conform to those of a bell curve. If so, which of course we hope it will then, we will then plot the actual information to create a bell curve and then create a bell curve and we'll get a little fancy with the characteristics of the bell curve in a following presentation. All right, let's go into the blank tab to get down to business. I'm gonna start by formatting the entire worksheet as we always do, selecting the triangle up top, right-clicking on the selected area, formatting the cells. I usually go to currency and then negative numbers bracketed and red with no dollar sign and removing the decimals. I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna put some standard data here that I'm gonna to use to then create our random data. So this is going to be the test scores. I'm going to say that the mean is 75. So we're thinking about a test situation. Notice I'm going to be writing this not in percents. I'm just going to be putting a 75 instead of 0.75 or 75 percent. So we're talking the scores can be going from you know 0 to 100 representing 0 to 100 not in percent or decimal format. This is going to be the stand third deviation which you can represent with a sigma or i'm just might be putting sd uh, to represent it in excel because it's easier and faster to type and then i'm just going to say that it's going to be 10 i'm going to use this data to then populate my randomly generated data now note in practice of course uh, we wouldn't have all this information if you were the instructor you would simply be taking the test scores plotting them out and then finding based on that information what the mean is what the standard deviation is however if we're generating the random numbers we can use excel to give us that information having an element of randomization in it but we have to give them some characteristics such as a mean and standard deviation i'm gonna select the entire worksheet and bold this you don't need to bold it yourself but I like to have it bold for recording purposes because you have to be bold 
uh, when you're recording, when you're on camera, you need to be you need to be bold. That's what I'm told by the producers and my editor here. So in any case, we're going to then say that we're going to take our data and we're going to add our data. Now, if you don't have this analysis tool, then you're going to need that to generate the random data. So to do that, you can go to the file tab on the left. You can then go down to the options at the bottom. And then when it, within the options, we want to have the add ins. And then down here at the bottom, we've got the add ins. If you hit the drop down, we want the Excel add ins and then say go. And then you want to check off that you have the analysis tool pack. And once you have the analysis tool pack in your tool belt, it's not that heavy or anything uh, to when you have it in your tool belt, you know, so you can have it there. Then it'll be in the data tab analysis. And now you've got your data analysis. So I'm going to be putting it right here. So I'm going to say this is going to be my random data. Now it's not totally random because it's going to be in accordance with the bell curve, right? But we're going to say, let's, let's format this home tab. Let's go to the bucket black and white. This is my normal uh, header formatting. I'm going to wrap it home tab alignment, wrap it, wrapping it, random data. That was my wrap of it. That wasn't a very good wrap. Didn't rhyme or anything. I'm going to go to the data analysis up top and then let's go down to random number generation random number generation all right so the number of of variables i'm just going to put one that's like the columns we only need one number of random numbers so how many numbers do we want let's say like let's say like 500 we have 500 numbers actually let's just make it larger just to let's make it a thousand That'd be a good lot data, a lot of data there. So we're going to say that the distribution, this is the key. We want it in accordance with uh, the normal distribution. So normal distribution. And then when you do that, it gives you the parameters that are necessary. We need the mean or the average. Now, again, in real life, you wouldn't have that because you're going to generate the data looking at the test scores in order to get the average. But here we have it because we need those parameters that doesn't remove the randomness, but it's a randomness that's controlled randomness. So standard deviation is going to be the 10. That's going to be giving us the spread, right? All right. So that's going to give us our data, the random seed. I don't need anything there. The output is I'm going to put it right here. So this is going to be the location of the output. I want it to start right there. So I want it in this worksheet right here on D2. So D2, just like R2, D2 and R2, D2, the he's from Star Wars gave us the numbers. So there we have, there's our randomly uh, generated numbers. And that's great. So now let's run some calculations. So we're imagining if this was real life, this is all we would have this random number generation from rant from past test scores, we probably would I'm going to make this smaller, we probably wouldn't have a 1000 <laughs> test scores. But we might if we've been doing if we've been teaching for a long time, we've had a lot of test scores, but uh, we're gonna we're, we're gonna take this data and now do our calculations on it. So that would normally be that we would want the mean or the average. So let's take that. I'm going to then say this is going to be equal to the average. We've seen these. So I'm going to do these fairly quickly. This is a average. And then I'm going to hold down control shift. I'm holding control shift and down to take me right down to the bottom of the data set and enter and boom, double clicking on it. There is our formula. There is our answer. It's 75%. What do you know? That's what we put in the random data thing. So home tab, that's not how it is these days because they inflate the scores, man. It's not really 70. So, it's, so if I add some decimals, it's 74.92. A B is a C these days because it's it should be around 70 in any case. That should be the average. 70 is average, right? Not any, not No, they totally inflate it now. That's what I hear, at least. I don't know. I'm out of it these days. Standard deviation. Standard deviation, but you can test that stuff out with your statistics, right? If you have the data, which they probably hide the data. But standard deviation is going to be standard deviation of the population, I'm going to say. I'm going to say control shift down and enter. And so there we have 10. I'm going to add some decimals, home tab, number group adding a, a couple decimals there. 
Now, I'm also going to add the median. So the median, that's the middle number. So the, the average is adding them all up, dividing by the number of them, which was 1,000. This one is going to take the one in the middle, just like Rocky's coach told him when Rocky saw three of Drago's out there, which the, the Russian guy, he said, hit the one in the middle, which was good advice. So we'll do, so we should keep that in mind. So we'll take control shift down and enter. And so that's 75. So we're going to say home tab, number group, and adding decimals here. Now, the fact that these two are similar in our actual data is one indication that it might actually follow a bell curve system. Notice that not all data follows a bell curve, but a lot of data you would kind of assume would. If you're talking about errors, for example, that's the classic example of when bell curves came about is when they were trying to make predictions. People never got it exactly right, but they had errors, like where the stars are gonna show up in the sky or whatever like that. You know, you can have errors that hopefully will average out to the actual answer. And so you would think same with test scores, you would think height, a lot of things in nature you would think, but a, a lot of stuff doesn't conform to the bell curve. So it's just like the other curves we talked about in the past, we wanna say, does it conform to a bell curve type of system? And if it is something that you would think would conform to a bell curve, like grades or something, and it doesn't, then again, that's a question to say, well, what is going on here? Because it's something because you would think it would, and then you and then you dig into why maybe it's not. Okay, so let's make column H smaller, and then I'm going to make a histogram. This is another indication of if if it would be a bell curve. I'll select the the name up top, Control Shift down all the data. Now I'm going to hold control backspace to get back up to the top without unselecting the data and then insert tab. We're going to go into the charts. I'm going to just make a standard good old histogram. There it is. Histogram of the data. So boom. So now this, of course, giving us our buckets down below. I let uh, Excel just choose the, bu the buckets. So it chose these buckets. And maybe I can format this data. If I format this data and I say, let's go to formatting and say that we want to have it to be, let's say currency, negative numbers bracketed two decimals. And so now we've got some brackets, uh, some data that's not so chaotic with so many decimals down here. So these you'll recall are the ranges that it's gonna be putting in and then it's counting the number of occurrences within the thousand that fall into those those ranges and this middle point of course where the most occurrences happen is around that 75 so if we put the focal point here it'd be around the middle notice this doesn't look exactly like a bell because we only have a thousand a thousand data points but it approximates a bell and if i drew a smooth bell curve on it the question is would that bell curve give us predictive power into the future and the assumption here would be yes uh because because it looks somewhat bell shaped right so so now that's what we'll do now i'm going to pull this on over to the right and say okay i think the bell curve is applicable in this situation would be the would be our determination and so now we're going to we're going to actually plot the smooth bell curve, uh, which will be more exact, just a smooth curve. And no notice that the, the, the calculation of the bell curve, the formula is a fairly complex formula, but the point of the bell curve usually isn't to try to understand the formula exactly, although that's a good exercise. It's, it's, to, it's to say, well, how can I apply? Whoever made the formula gave us a great gift, right? because now we're able to apply that to these to these situations using tools such as Excel to approximate our data. So I'm going to say this is going to be X. Uh, I'm going to say this will be P of X. And so let's start with those two. We'll plot our data out. I'm going to go to the Home tab, Font Group. Let's make it black and white. I'm going to center it, Alignment Center. Let's make this one a bit smaller. All right, so just to get an idea of uh, of what we can do now, uh, we can let we're, we're gonna we're gonna say what should our x's be, right? We could have a lower limit 
and an upper limit basically on the X's. Now we could just have X's go from zero on up to 100, or we might try to say, hey, look, I'm just gonna go uh, four deviation, standard deviations out. And that's usually enough to capture all of the data. So the way the bell curve basically is going to work here, of course, is that most of the data is gonna be in one standard deviation and then within two standard deviations, a large part of the data is going to be there. And if you get over three standard deviations, very small amount of the data would be outside of that range. And then so four standard deviations, again, would basically encompass almost everything, right? So if I'm trying to say, what should my X's be? What should be the bottom part and the top part so I can plot my graph? If I choose four standard deviations, I'm going to be picking up most of the data. So let me show you what I mean here. We're going to say if I took uh, a, a, let's call this lower X and then the upper X for our chart. So these are the chart X uh, areas, the lower and upper. So I can say, all right, this, this lower amount is going to be equal to the mean, which is the middle point. That's where that's going to be the top, the tallest part of the bell curve. And then I'm going to say minus, because it's the lower point, minus this 10.09, which measures the spread. And I want to go uh, four standard deviations lower. So I'm going to say times four. So I'm, let's pull this down a bit. I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to say standard deviation D deviations and let's say four like that so i'll do it this way so this minus that and then i'll say times four and i can point to it there and then maybe i should add some decimals okay and then the upper the upper limit is going to be equal to the mean the middle point plus four standard deviations one standard deviation is 10.09 part of the spread times four we want four of them and that'll give us uh 115. so we're going to say then the range is going to be from 34 up uh to to 115. now obviously again it might cap at 100 so the 115 when you think about a bell curve in general remember that the tails of the bell curve can go out forever in a theoretical bell curve obviously from a practical real world example there might be an upper or lower limit. In our case, the lower limit generally being zero and the upper limit uh, 100. But if I was to capture four standard deviations, this is the range that we can pick. So if I was to say, I'm gonna try to plot this thing, then instead of starting at, at zero, I could possibly start at 34 about, and that would pick up pretty much all of the data, right? So I could say, let's go from, uh, and now I could do this with like, well, let's do it just this way. I'm going to say 34 and then 35. I'm going to select those two and I'm just going to bring it on down till I get to 116, right? So that should capture all of the data. And you can see the number format. I can go till I get down to 116 right there. That's when it happens. And that should capture all of our, all of the data, the primary part of the data. So then I'm going to say, all right, and then now let's, let's do, uh, let's actually just plot it. So if I go over here, this is going to be our norm uh, dot dist function for each of these X values. So I'm going to say this equals norm dot dist. So norm dot dist, this is going to be our major function. Here's the arguments that we need to, to input in order to get the result for it. So we're gonna say norm.dist has an X value of 34. Now I'm not gonna do an array right now. I'm gonna do it basically uh, without an array formatting. And then comma, the mean is gonna be this mean, 74. I'm not gonna use the mean that we used when we first started. It's close, but not exactly the same as the mean of our actual data. I'll use the mean of the actual data. And then I'm gonna select F4, making it absolute dollar sign before the G and the two, comma, standard deviation the spread is going to be that 10.09 uh, f4 so that when i copy it down those two cells will not move down comma and then this is whether we want it to be cumulative or not 
which is similar to the arguments if you saw the pri if you saw our presentations on on the Poisson distribution and and those other distributions they had some of them had this similar kind of argument but it might be a little bit different when you're talking about the normal distribution because you're talking about the area under the curve when when you're talking about the cumulative meaning there's kind of calculus involved because you're talking possibly because you're talking about the area under the curve right so integral so but so but conceptually similar kind of concept to it but we want to have it uh as of a certain point so i'm going to say zero to make it false or you can type in false or you can put in zero zero is easier to type so i'm going to close it up and spell and then <laughs> and then i'll let's make that a percent home tab uh number group i'm going to percentify this add some decimals and then i'll double click on the fill handle and that'll copy it down so i can copy it down and so we can we can for example uh look at the and and by the way if i select this entire thing control shift down oh what what did you do excel what did you do okay i, I hit the right arrow control shift down and i look at all my data it adds up to a hundred percent right also remember that in order to get this at the 100% that we represented our data on the left, which represents test scores, not in the format of decimals or percentages in this case, but as whole numbers. So if you have the information of test scores in the format of percentages or decimals, sometimes it might be easier to multiply at times of 100, representing the data as basically whole numbers so that when you get your percentages over here, then it'll basically add up to the 100 percent so now we can ask questions such as or this calculation for example means that what would be the likelihood for example that we would get a 64 percent we're at the 2.2 percent likelihood that's not the question of what's the likelihood that i get 64 or under that would be one of the cumulative types of questions so then we can of course ask questions what's the likelihood that i get 64 percent or above uh, for example, and we'll do some of those uh, calculations in uh, uh, a little bit here. But for now, let's continue plotting out our graph. Now, you could just take these percentages and plot the graph out this way. So I can select my uh, item up top. I'm going to hit Control Shift down, and then I'm going to say uh, Control Backspace, taking me back to the top, so I can insert another histogram. So I can go into, or let's let's do a uh, actual chart this time so I can say this is going to be charts and this is going to be a bar chart not a histogram so the bar chart and of course you get this nice smooth bell curve looking thing because of course we did this with our our actual formulas uh, and functions so this is going to be the p of x I'll leave I'll leave that there and it's graphing now the percent uh, the percent uh, likelihoods but we need to fix that bottom bit. So I'm going to select the data up top. I'm going to go into the select data and on the, I'm going to edit this side and we want to pick up our numbers, which are starting at 34, not one. That's why it's, a, that's why it's messed up here. So we're going to put our cursor on 34, control shift down. And, and then I'm going to say, okay, now you got to be kind of careful making sure it picks it up over here. Cause sometimes Excel gets a little a little finicky over here so if this just has one number then something got messed up when you did that and you have to do it again but i'm going to say okay and so now if i scroll up top so now we've got this nice bell curve and that middle point is around you know the 75 at that middle point nice and smooth okay and so then we can also add an area uh, type of bell curve i'm going to pull this to the side we will get back to it soon because we could then think, I would like to compare, is there a way to compare my data to the actual data, the actual data versus the bell curve? So we'll think about that in a little bit. But first, note that you can also plot this with an area. So I'm gonna select this item again, Control Shift down, and then I'm gonna hit Control Backspace. And this time we're gonna go into the Insert tab, and we're gonna to go to the charts and graphs. And if you select, I believe this one, then down here, you've got your areas down below. So we'll pick this as the area. And so I'll pick that one. 
And so now you've got a graph uh, that gives you that the area graph. And this is the one uh, that we can, we can work with because oftentimes when you're thinking about the bell curve, you're trying to get the area under the curve, right? That's gonna be part of our calculations because that's gonna give us our, our probability. So let's, once again, I gotta fix this, this bottom bit. So I'm gonna go up top and go to the select data I'm gonna to go to the edit over here and select this one again, and then pick our X's holding control shift down. Usually like you could hit the control backspace, but again, sometimes that messes it up. So I just like to go okay, and then okay, and see if it picks it up and be awfully careful with Excel when we do that part, because again, Excel gets a little wonky sometimes right there. So there we, there we have it. So we'll get a little bit more fancy on this one and say, can we, uh, can we uh, plot questions like if it's over a certain amount or under a certain amount and could we get the Z score on there? So we'll do that uh, in future presentations. But for now, let's put this at the bottom of our stack of charts, cool charts that we've been making. So notice that if you just wanna see the shape of it, the bar chart works well, the area chart is gonna give us that area, however. Uh, so, which is what we're usually thinking in when we're thinking of the of the normal distribution. Now we could compare this to our actual data. So let's do our actual, and then let's put our frequency. Frequency. That's totally not spelled right, is it? There's no way I'll spell check it. Oh, they say it is. I don't know. I'll take their word for it. I still have my doubt. Font group. Let's go black, white, wrap it, center it. I'll make it a little bit larger. And now I'm gonna do a frequency of our actual data to see how many times out of the thousand test scores we have that we get to each of these X's. So this is gonna count our actual data in accordance with these X's. So I'm gonna say this equals uh, the frequency tab. And then I'm, this is an array formula. So fancy array formula. I'm gonna pick my data over here, control shift down all of the data, control backspace up to the top. Then I need to pick my X arrays. So I'm gonna say comma, and then put my cursor on the X arrays, control shift down, control backspace taking me back up. So this is saying, all right, Excel, I would like you to find all of this data uh, and see and, and put it into the groups, our buckets, with these numbers being in essence the top part of the bucket right so it's going to take everything below uh 34 up to and including 34 and then everything from 34 uh or above 34 up to and including 35 and so on hopefully i got the cutoffs right there so if i scroll down there it is now it picked up this last bit down there which i don't i don't want it to hang out that far so i'm going to change this to three and so there we have it. And so then if I put my totals down here, I can say Alt Enter, this should add up to 100%. Let's percentify it, home tab number, percentify. And then Alt Enter for the sum function, this should add up to 1000 because that's how many we told Excel to count. That's how many sample test scores that we had in our data set. Now, if I wanna compare this, I can't compare this to the P of X directly I, I could make a histogram from this, right? I could make a histogram and I'll come up to a similar kind of histogram. But I, what I'd like to do is say, well, how can I get the percentages? So I can either I can either make this into percentages or I can make the percentages into a frequency by multiplying the percentages times a thousand. Now, normally it'd be easier to say percent of total to make to make our data into a percent. So I'm gonna say black, white uh, center. So I'm gonna take every number divided by the total. This equals this number divided by control shift down. I just want that thousand. So enter, double clicking on it. I'm gonna make this second number absolute F4 so that that bottom number doesn't move down as I copy the formula down. I'm gonna make it a percent before copying it down, home tab, number group percentifying it couple decimals fill handle double clicking it copying it down so now i have a set of data similar 
to this set of data. So this is my actual percent of the total, and this would be my predicted, you know, percents of whatever total I'd be using. And so then I can I can take my difference and I can say, okay, what's the difference between my actual data and this is the perfect bell curve minus my actual percent data, percentifying this home tab number, percentify, add some decimals, and then copy it on down. So now we can see our differences here. So when we're thinking about our data, then I'll stop it here. We'll continue on with this next time. But the general idea is we can take our actual data set in real life. In practice, you can actually build your data set, but you would need the mean and the standard deviation to do so. In practice, you might not know those numbers, of course, and you would take your data and then calculate those numbers, the mean, the standard deviation. If the median is similar to the mean, it's likely it might follow a normal distribution. So you might then plot a normal distribution in this format being then able to create our graphs. And then we can also look at our actual data and compare it to the normal distribution at each point, which could also give us an indication as to how close the actual data mirrors a normal distribution. We'll continue on with our graphs in a future presentation.